Good morning everybody and welcome back. God, I love this place, I really do. <laughs> At the moment, it's, it's drizzle. Uh, if you're familiar with that term, that's very, very fine rain for those of you that, that might not be familiar with it in other countries. Um, but not only drizzle, but it's, it's windblown drizzle. I've been out here for about half an hour now, just again, enjoying the birds. If you watched last week's video, um, I spent some time about half a mile in that direction, photographing some rocks. There's so many opportunities out here. There really are, in spite of what it looks like. It, I mean, to the untrained eye, um, those of you that, that probably aren't photographers that are watching this and thinking about getting into photography, you'd think that these are not the conditions you would expect to take great photographs in. But I kid you not, there are opportunities everywhere. And you've just got to put your head down, get past the rain and the wind and the cold, and, uh, and just enjoy looking for those little nuggets. I'm just going to have a wander along the beach now and uh, just see what the eye picks up. But I'm sure um, I'm never that down that I think that there's, there's nothing to be found. I'm absolutely convinced that there'll be something out here uh, for the lens this morning. So let's grab the tripod and head out into this almost expanse of nothingness and see what, to, see what the day provides us with. So originally I walked out about 200 yards in that direction I was getting absolutely soaked. The further out you get the wind picks up and uh, it's just not easy out there. So I've retreated back, the van's only about um, 70 yards at the back of the video camera so if it comes heavy at least I've got somewhere warm and dry to go to um, if that does happen. It does feel like it's coming a little bit brighter but maybe I'm just being overly optimistic. Um, the shots that I just saw you, showed you a snippet of, uh, I'll talk you through now, it was a bit of a teaser. Um, I, I've not filmed it because everything's just getting soaked. The, the little shower cap there has been on the video camera for the most part and I've just taken it off just to briefly talk you through this. Now, as, oft, as is often the case with me mostly these days is that I don't have, uh, or rarely have, uh, a plan of what I want to shoot. I like to react to whatever um, appeals to me on any given day because I feel then that the images are more personal to me. So as I was walking along the strand line just, just looking amongst the pebbles and the seaweeds this one little rock down here caught my eye and I'll show you it now. It's different to all the other rocks around it in that it's, it's got this marble in through it that the other uh, rocks or pebbles don't really have. And all around the smooth pebble, you've got hundreds of fragments of shells. And, and these shells look like mussels, I think the blue ones, and also you've got limpet shells as well. Now the blue mussel shells really complement um, the, 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 the almost slate blue colour of the pebble. Now the pebble being smooth and round and the shell, the, the fragments being sharp and small, uh, add a lovely contrast to the scene and it's that that really um, drew me in um, along with the, the, the added benefit of the pebble having that lovely marble in through it. In terms of setup it was a usual thing for me, the camera directly over the top, it was the 100mm macro lens. Um, I had a polarizer on just to remove a bit of, bit of reflectiveness off the pebble on one side, that, that, that certainly helped with and helped to saturate the colours of the blues as well. Um, it was f16, 100 ISO and about 3 second exposure. I did do a focus stack because the, the, where the shells are and the pebble, it, the, the ground here is quite undulating so I wanted to make sure that I got sharpness all the way through. So I'll head off um, a little bit further now, see what else I can find. I'm praying that this, this, this rain stops and I can get further afield but for now I'm going to continue wandering along here so I'll put that on now.
So the rain has finally stopped at last and I've managed to get further into the beach. I can hear occasionally it's stopped now, but there was um, there's a ship on the estuary with its foghorn going, so it's pretty grim out there still. And there's just a little bit of slight uh, dri drizzle in the air, but not enough to, to make me want to get back to where I've just come from. I've uh, now made my way to the rocks where I, I did most of the video last week and I've come past them and I'm now exploring this little patch behind me. But I just wanted to make the point that out here, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of shots that are nearly, but not quite, they just don't quite make the cut. And I wanted to show you one of those now. In fact, this particular one, if I'd, if I'd have photographed it, I actually think it's not a bad shot, but if I'd have photographed it, I'm not sure I could have convinced anybody that I didn't put this stone where I found it. So it's just over here. Uh, Mikey, I thought for a minute, I, I swung round then, I thought for a minute, I couldn't blooming see it again. But um, these things disappear so easily. So look at this, this is what I mean by one of those shots that's so very nearly, but not quite. Look at that, that fissure there, the way that the sandstone's fractured and that rock that's just perched on top. I, I, I doubt I could convince anybody that I, I didn't put that there, but I honestly didn't. These things just get washed up with the tide. But um, you move the camera in and you start to see the potential image starting to take place. And you move it round in different positions, diagonally through the frame there like that. Um, you, could, you could turn it round vertically. Um, there's all sorts of manner of, of different compositions you could go for, like that. Um, I, I think I rather like, my favourite one is probably that one I quite like. Maybe just tilt it round ever so slightly there. They're just not quite good enough and, and I'm sure you'd appreciate that that stone aside that looks like it's been placed, it's not of that high standard that I would I would want to put on the film, and uh, the place is plastered with with those types of images. But I'm hanging out for a good one. I'm hanging out. Um, whether whether I'll find one today is is to be seen. Uh, it's uh, it's just a case of walking over it and uh, just hoping that some something just piques your your attention, and it's nice enough to to be worthy of getting the camera out. But uh, so far, nothing yet. So I found a little shot here that I'm reasonably happy with. I was drawn to the colours uh, initially, um, lots of reds, greens, uh, dark, uh, almost black colours, and then you've got some nice um, texture and the, the, the way that the rocks eroded creates a nice line through the scene. But something I've never tried before, which I'm, it's become apparent I need to do here, is um, do a polarizer blend as the rock's quite wet obviously we've had a lot of rain this morning and I want to saturate the rock as much as possible and I'm finding that I can't polarize all of it at any one time there's not it's not a focus stack so it's not that complicated um, it's an f16 that would really make it difficult to do uh, focus stacking and polarized blending as well so what I'm doing is I've, I've, I've found a place within the image that I'm happy with f16 will give me reasonable sharpness throughout and I'm taking images uh, various polarization just watching the polarizer have an effect on different parts of the scene and just taking the shot each time so that when I put them all together, I've got a fully polarised image. I'm not that wide, really. I'm, I'm only currently on um, around about 50 mil, so I would have thought that the polariser would have worked across the whole of the image, but it, it clearly isn't. So I'll quickly just show you the composition now, and um, and then I'll put it. I'll put the image on. So this is the little scene that I've found, uh, excuse the tripod legs. I've got the video camera up uh, just with a little bit wider so you can see a bit more of the scene than what the stills camera um, is focused on. But what caught my eye was this lovely line that works its way through um, the frame as I've got it lined up. Now the line is the main focal point of the image but it's the colours that help to, to, to really bring the whole scene alive. This lovely dark 
section here running through and then you've got this lovely sand sandy red sandstone here the green area just here on this bend and a nice blushing of red over on that side too um, but the line is the main feature that I want you to see when you look at the image how it runs from one side of the frame to the other this little patch over here I'm not sure how much or how little I'm going to include of that I think it needs some of it just to give it a bit of an anchor on that top top corner there but uh, it really is all about this line and of course the lovely textures within the sandstone so I'll put that image on now So I need to keep this really quick. The weather's coming in again. The lighthouse has disappeared. The headland over there has disappeared. There's a big weather front coming in overnight and we're right on the tail end of it where, where I am at the moment. And I've spotted um, on the floor, I said it's good for birds, this place, a little feather just sat on its own in the sand, surrounded by lovely wet sand. Now the obvious thing is to photograph it from a distance and, and have it just set amongst the sand but I've done that along with a nice close-up as well. Um, F16 on both shots um, and a macro lens, no polarizers, just very very straight. A lovely simple scene, as luck would have it the feather's got some little droplets of water on it so that really adds to the overall feel of the image. For me the much closer shot uh, is, is certainly more compelling to look at. Um, the one from higher up is, is much more of a standard sort of representational look whereas if you get down really in close often I say um, when, you, when you think you're close enough going a little bit closer it's always surprising what you find when you go in even closer still. Often when I'm looking at my images and I bring them up on the computer screen I often see images within images so just be mindful of that. So like I say f16 macro lens no polarizer um, I've put it up to 800 ISO on this instance because the wind is blowing the little droplets of water ever so slightly and I want them to be sharp so I'll put that on now.